Mental Health Monday here on 5 Minutes with Sean. Maybe 10 starts right now. Look, I think as people, we tend to try and take on the world a lot. Um, And I get it, you know, that hustle and grind culture, which I have no use for, but I understand why it exists. I understand what people do. Um, But here's the thing. In order to do those things, you have to be dialed in, right? You have to have things structured. Your mind has to be open. Things have to be prepared to really to do it efficiently and make it work. You have to be there. But one of the things most people don't think about beforehand is asking people who've done it for help, right? And 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 so asking for help is a huge, huge thing. And I have tried my darndest to get better at it. Um my problem is I ask for help and then I end up figuring out a way to do it myself. And that's my whole thing. That's all my shit. Um, but when we ask for help, when people approach you for help, um, think about think about how you should react. And I mean this in a way that like when I get asked for help, I immediately try to figure out a way to do that, um, which is weird because I think, I think ultimately people see me as sort of a um, – Maybe you might see me as a helper, but some people might see me as more of a a, a recluse. So when I, you know, why would I help if I see something? But I I am someone who helps. Um, I watched a neighbor the other day struggle to put a, like, lawn mowing trailer in the back of his pickup truck. It was gigantic. He was by himself. And uh, and he wasn't asking anyone for help. People had walked by. Neighbors were outside. And no one had done anything. And so I had walked over. And he was like, oh, my God, thank you so much. And, and again, I thought to myself, well, bro, you saw me across the street. You could have just asked for help. Um, but especially as guys, you know, we are uh, – we can we can do that. We are masculine. We can handle that. Uh, it's not necessarily true. And I wouldn't put a ton of stock in that approach um, because – Together, you will go faster. You will go further. You will go more efficiently. Um, so when I when I first went off on my own, it would have been 2008, 2009. Um, I tried to do my own thing and do some consulting and dealership stuff and in dealership work. And, uh, and I did it by myself. And it was a grind. And I burned myself out really, 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 really fast. And I remember when I got offered the corporate job that I was being offered, it was sort of like a mirage, you know, where it was like, holy shit, I can actually get out of this, right? So I want you to think, can carry me through this with the mindset? So you see this corporate mirage and you're like, oh my God, I can get a six-figure payday. I can be left alone. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Um, from trying to figure out how to make it on my own by myself. So I own my company. I could do things. You're a solopreneur. And that's cool. That, that, that's awesome. But in order to create companies, it takes people. And so the second time around, uh, by the way, it took me uh, about 18 months, probably less than that, to figure out that I was not a fit for corporate America anymore. I say that because as a child, I worked in corporate America for the men's warehouse, but it was the coolest fucking corporation around ever when it happened, okay? And it wasn't even close what they were doing. So uh, it wasn't corporate America. It was awesomeness. And if more corporations were as awesome as they were when they were when they were in that time what they were, then I would maybe think about it. Um, but it is interesting because I had a conversation recently um, – a couple weeks on the show, I had a, a hat from a company called Sorting Robotics. They are in the cannabis industry. They are NASA people that have come to cannabis to make robots. And so I was talking with one of I was talking with their head of sales, Ben. We were having a great discussion, and we were going back and forth. And uh, I said, "Yeah, I've been on my own for 14 years." He goes, "I've been not on my own. Finally, here." And I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, dude, after 25 years, I just I'm good. I wanted to just have somebody else deal with the headache. And I said to him quietly. I think I get that, but I'm unemployable (laughs) because to me, it is true. Um, I could not imagine someone telling me how tomorrow is going to go or to show up to an office or to sit in a useless fucking meeting and tell me something I don't need to know or give advice to a company, help them form a curriculum, then take it on their own, make money on it and leave you on the sideline. Things like this are annoying. Um, But when we ask for help, 
we and we give help. We should we should not expect anything in return. That is yet another lesson from my mother um, in talking about where we approach, how we approach, what we say. And I think there's probably something to it. Ultimately, I truly do, um, because I. I don't, I don't need recognition when people ask me for help. Um, and it's weird when people need recognition when they've given help or offered help. Um, and so I, I would still tell you the biggest issue is asking for it. I still don't think enough people do it. I think, And I think the other thing that happens there, um, like in interpersonal relationships, uh, is that if people don't ask for help and that frustration starts to really stack on top of them piece by piece by piece, what ends up happening is an outburst down here that likely has nothing to do with whatever got said. It was more about what was building over here. And those are the reasons that I think we begin to ask for help. Um, Asking for help could be, as I said, as simple as, you know, loading a trailer into your truck, but it could be asking for help with your mental health. And I think that's the biggest thing people need to remember is that it is okay to not be okay. That's the key, though, is that realization, that self-awareness, to bring the self-awareness forward and to say, I know that I need help with this. This is something I have to attack. Um, and And I've... I've done it more in the last 10 years than I have ever in my life. And I've done it, especially as I talked about a couple weeks ago, about breaking into, you know, the foreground of a industry that I've been in the background of for a long time in cannabis. Um, it, I had to ask for help. I had to go off on that limb and I had to get involved um, and, and, and really do what we're trying to do here. You know what I mean? And, and, that's in order to accomplish the goals I want in my life, I did. So when we came back out of corporate America and we started Carbiz here um, going on, what is this, 11 years ago, it, it meant something really major to me to be able to ask for help and to be in a position to accept it. Accepting help is, I think, just as weird and just as odd to people um, as – as, as asking for it. And, and I think that there's also the side of asking is when you don't ask and someone offers and you know you need it and you still say no. That's the shit that will get you in trouble. And I don't mean legal trouble. I mean to you, self-indebted trouble because you ultimately knew you needed it and you should have accepted it. And so just put your ego aside, put the machismo aside and just realize that help is help. And, and, and again, faster and more efficient together than ever alone. Think about think about rowing a boat or what you know what I mean? Like what, what analogy do I need to give you to prove that you'll get it faster if, if you go with people? So um, on the mental health side, I don't want to underscore how important it is to put yourself out there and let people know where you're at especially when things aren't good. And I think a lot of people want to either make it appear good on social media or talk good. You know, the next time someone you ask how someone's doing and they say not great, instead of you answering with great and bypassing the fact that they said not great, why don't you stop and say, what's going on, man? Just one second. Um, I'm somebody who I touch, I, 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 I check in, I call it a touch point, but I, I, I check in on people a lot. Like it's it's my life. I make a life. I make a living out of that part of my connections and making sure that people know that I'm there for them, no matter if it was before, after, or during a business relationship, because that's who I am. Um, bleeding heart, as my wife calls it, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But but I'm also a businessman, and I've recently been referring to myself as a capitalist hippie, um, and so there there is making money is why. I get up in the morning is to create the opportunity for me to stay self-employed and employ other people underneath my company that can also make a living, can also find what they want to do and their passion in life is about as meaningful as it gets. But again, would have never happened if I wouldn't have asked for help. So next time you think about it, ask for it, put all that other bullshit aside. All right, go out, have yourselves a safe and happy Halloween. And I will talk to you a few days before we all go and punch our punch our votes.
We'll talk soon. Have a great week.